Hey everybody, my name is Josh Searing, founder of KittyHawk.io here in San Francisco at the KittyHawk HQ. I wanted to take a few minutes today for today's KittyHawk hot take to talk about GPS rollover and why it's suddenly such an important topic that you're seeing scroll across the news. So first, we have to understand what people are talking about when they're talking about a rollover. And ultimately, this is because the amount of storage in the GPS satellites is 10 bits, and that stores the number of weeks. We're going to get to why weeks is important and why time is so critical to GPS, but for now, let's understand the very basic elements of why this is going to happen and what it actually means. So in binary, when we store something in 10 bits, that allows us to have 1,024 weeks. If you do some uh, fidgeting with the math, you'll understand that in base 2, you can store up to 1024 inside of that piece of storage. And I'll give you a good example of what this looks like. So here I've written out 1,022, and so it's 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, and right, the way we count in binary is we go 0, 1, and then when we want to say 2, we have to say we don't have 2, we only have 10, right? So 3 is 11, and 4 is 100, and so on from there. And ultimately, what happens is, okay, 1022, we have a 0 at the end here, we can increment one more. So when we go to 1023, all we have is all 1s. Uh-oh. What do we do when we hit week 1024? And you may have heard this uh, before when, if you were alive or sentient during the time of uh, the year 2000, they ran into a similar issue where they were unable to store the entire date and the allotted memory. Now, luckily, uh, the GPS system was deployed in the early 80s, and this was something that they had already thought about. They kind of knew this is something we may have to account for. And so that's what the GPS rollover is referring to. Can your hardware deal with the idea that there are new dates happening because we've started back again at week zero? What does this mean? Oh, the humanity. But everything's usually pretty good. If your stuff was made in the last 10 to 15 years, it accounts for the idea of GPS rollover. That's why, for example, DJI drones came out and they made a really nice statement saying, don't worry, GPS rollover is not going to be a problem. But I wanted to dive in just a little bit as to why time is so important to the GPS system. So first, the most important thing to know is that the GPS satellites are really, really advanced clocks. In fact, in each, in each GPS satellite, there is an atomic clock with cesium that keeps track of the time within plus or minus two nanoseconds, two billionths of a second. This is a really big deal. That's really accurate just as accurate as anything we have here on Earth. But the reason that they need such accurate clocks is because of how the system works. So when you open your phone and you start getting GPS, or your drone's flying around and you're getting GPS information, that's a one-way system. Your, your drone isn't talking back to those satellites. And so ultimately there's about 40 GPS satellites, and what they're doing is they're transmitting a signal down to the Earth. And that signal says, this is where I am, and here's when I sent you that signal. And using that information from three or more satellites, which is where we get the term triangulation, tri for three, and because they use spheres to calculate where you are, not just circles, we use the term trilateration, an important differentiation. And because they're able to see, okay, if I got this signal from this satellite in this place at this time, I now have a pretty good idea of where I am. And you, if you really want to go down the rabbit hole, which I really advocate you doing, there are two things that apply here that you may not be cognizant of. The first is the idea of general relativity. This is one of Einstein's theories, and it says that time moves slower in higher gravity. So we're closer to the Earth, we're not as far away from the Earth as the satellite, so time is appearing to move slower for us, like the term suggests it's relative. But including that, we also have the satellite moving really fast, so it's 11,806 11, miles above the Earth, but it's also moving at 8,700 miles an hour. That is really fast. And because of this, it's subject to another type of relativity called special relativity. And you can go read about this, it's super exciting, but the, the long story short, the spoiler alert, is that time moves slower to distant observers based upon the idea that the speed of light's a constant and it takes time for you to see things that may be happening instantaneously for somebody much closer to that event. So we have something really far away from us that's moving really fast. We need to account for that in our GPS calculations. And these systems are so sensitive, so, so precise that 
If we were not accounting for this, they would be off by miles and miles and miles. And this is why when you think about, holy cow, why is my GPS so bad in this location? When you start to learn how this system works, it's a miracle it ever works at all. So because of these different types of relativities, these calculations in the end mean that the satellites are seeing, essentially, they're, they're moving 49,500 nanoseconds a day faster than those of us here right on planet Earth. So we're on Terraforma, but to us, it seems as though the satellites are moving faster. And because they have super accurate clocks that are two nanoseconds, we're able to account for all of this. And in the end, we get that nice little blue dot or that awesome telemetry right off the drone to figure out where we are. So what seems like a really small problem of why do we even care about the date? How can we just get another bit in there? What's the big deal? Starts to become very complex when you really dig into this to the subject. I hope this was as illuminating for you as it was for me. I love this stuff, and just understanding how these complex systems work is really key to making sure that we're able to build the safest possible products for the aerospace industry going forward. As always, I'm Josh. This has been today's Kitty Hawk Hot Take. Thank you for watching.